to One Quick Question with InfoMedia, your source for answers to your questions about websites, digital marketing, and more. I'm your host, Carrie Rollwagon. So today we are here with Russell Marbot. Russell, can you tell people what you do here at InfoMedia and maybe what you were doing before we started the podcast? Uh, I'm a developer. And I was just uh, doing some different fixes for different websites, working in the support de- uh, department, some today. Sweet. Well, this is something we actually deal with a lot in support, I think. Uh, the question is, how can I stop getting email spam from my website? So I think especially, it seems like it's always continually getting more and more, like we get more and more spam. But sometimes uh, somebody's getting like a massive amount that they didn't get before. And it is frustrating to just be like sorting through your email and seeing all the, the spam responses come in. So is there, is that just like tough luck or is there anything that we can do about that? I mean, there's definitely stuff that we can do. Um, but like a full on stop, no. I mean, that's not really possible. All You're right, always well, thank gonna... you for listening. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can stop right there. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's always going to be a cat and mouse game, and it's always a balancing act because the stricter you get with your filtering, the more of a possibility it is that you actually filter out emails that you actually want. So, you know, there's obvious cases where it's like, oh, I'm getting hit, you know, every minute by this particular IP, like this is, I'm getting spammed, you know, I'm getting, so you can deal with that sort of stuff and that's pretty obvious, but some stuff is a little less obvious, I would say. Is it all always coming from the same IP address or how do you know that? Depending on what, you know, software you're using or or plugin or, or forms you're using, it depends. Um, you can find that out, but there's a lot of different ways. Let's just put it that way. Well, what usually happens if we get a request from a client that says, like, I think I'm getting spam? Like, what are some of the first things we ask or check? Well, we're going to go look at the entries and kind of see the nature of the entries. And like I said, uh, an obvious tell is if you're getting a lot of spam, you know, every minute you're getting a bunch of entries. They're coming from, like, you know, Russia or something like that. And it's like, I shouldn't be getting emails from Russia. Like, I don't do business in Russia. You know? Yeah. That's real obvious. Okay. Some are less obvious. Okay. So is it, so it is kind of like the location they're coming from, the frequency that they're coming from, and then also we look at the content to some extent. Yeah, absolutely. What are some of the steps if you're like, yes, this is spam, you know, you're getting maybe not attacked, but you're getting a lot of of messages you don't want to get. Um, what are some of the things that we can offer to people or that we recommend? Well, when we're talking about forms and form entries, uh, there's some practical things we can do. Um, so these are like you have a form on your site and it's sending you an email, but that form is getting right. hit by a bunch of spam. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of what we you see. Can, yeah. You can add recaptchas, which are going to catch some of it. You can add like honeypot anti-spam, which is going to catch some of it. Like, like I said, it's always a cat and mouse game with some of this stuff. So it's like with hackers, like you're never just going to shut down hackers. Mm-hmm. You're going to, there's always going to be a new way to hack, you know, a new vulnerability. Mm-hmm. So it's the cat and mouse game. But those are two pretty easy things to implement. And then you start to get into things like filtering out, you know, countries or banning certain IPs. Um yeah. And again, that's kind of like a balancing act depending on your business and who you're serving. Okay. So we've had uh, podcast episodes before on reCAPTCHA, like what it is and how it works. But what is a honeypot? Um, it's just, it's really just some magic on the back end that has oh, a list. Yeah. <laughs> has like a list of, of known spam that it filters out, basically. Okay, cool. So that's just. Kind of the same concept of like the IP or the country blocking, but like it's a little bit more like specific things that has like have been known as bad behavior. Yeah, it's it's hit like a list or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Is there anything that people can do? 
Are there are there anything that like attract spam that maybe you might be doing on your website forms, for example, or on your site that is maybe causing some of this in the first place? A lot of it's just really random, to be honest. I mean, making forms required is always good, but it, it's really random, to be honest. What do you mean by making forms required? Like making... Like form fields required. And, oh, okay. Yeah. So I didn't realize that, that like... Like requiring, like, does it's it have to be every st- single thing or does it have to be some? Like, no, something? no, and it's not necessarily going to stop them either, mm-hmm. but it's just another little layer. Yeah. I, I, I'm, it's not going to do much, but it's going to do a little bit. People used to say, like, not to put an email address online, like, they used to break it up, like, instead of, like, you know, uh, bot at infomedia.com it would be like spell it out or break it up is that still does that still matter if you even list your your email on your website uh yeah you can obfuscate it Mm -hmm. um using different you know uh methods you know you can use javascript or different things but that's kind of more direct email to email and less like form stuff okay so don't put your email everywhere or maybe do just like a click. Um, they they could open up the email client instead of just like writing the email. Um, uh, make some form fields required. Maybe put a recaptcha on there, um, and then we can do some stuff on the back end to to check on some other things. But do or is something like a kismet? Is that just like a? Um, is that a form of like what is that? It's it's more in on one of. Uh like a uh, honeypot. Okay. It's that sort of thing where they're compiling lists or certain behaviors and they're filtering it out for okay. that. So that's like a product though, sort of. Is that right? Or like a, you pay yeah, for a service. I mean a service yeah, kind of, yeah. 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 I mean, and the other thing I failed to mention, I guess, is you want to mark as spam. You know, if you get spam in your inbox, mark it as spam. So you can, you know, teach the algorithm. Okay. And if you're getting things that in your spam folder that are not spam that you don't want to hit, make sure and mark that not as spam. Okay. So every so often, yeah, check your spam folder if you think you if you think things are going to spam that shouldn't be and like make sure it's not marked that way. Um and then the same thing like if you see something that's bad, mark it as spam, like just make yeah, sorry. Yep. All right. Well, thanks Russell. No problem. Um now I'm going to tell everybody a little about bit about one quick question which is brought to you by infomedia um it is hosted by me and our producer is alina harmond brad davis uh created our theme music and you can find show notes to everything we talk about today at infomedia.com slash quick question um so i'll leave you with this thought a real expert helps to clarify not confuse so don't take website advice from someone who can't give you a straight answer Thank you.